it's uh, my honor and my pleasure to introduce Chuck Dossie. Uh, so today I'm speaking on behalf of the Benton Rural Electric Cooperative Association, which is a nonprofit, consumer-owned electric cooperative located in Prosser, Washington, which is the other side, the eastern side of the state, where we grow a lot of wine grapes, uh, good kids, and have clean living. Um, Benton REA is an electric uh, utility, has about $100 million worth of plant investment, and we're very proud that this year it's celebrating its 75th year of continued service to its membership. Um, many of you may know the story, but I did want to talk just a little bit and set the stage for what electric co-ops are about. They've given me seven minutes, and I'll try to stay to that time. But the electric co-ops were born out of a necessity um, to address infrastructure needs that individuals at the time couldn't address on their own, but that by working together through the cooperative model that they could accomplish. There are over 900 electric co-ops today across the nation in 47 states, most of which were initiated in the 1930s. Uh, it was an administration decision at that time to try to electrify the rural areas, and they recognized the importance and the value that would come from that. Um, initially, the core mission of the electric co-ops were to construct and operate distribution facilities to provide electricity to many of the urban, or excuse me, many of the rural areas which either didn't have electricity at the time or were underserved because of the difficult economic uh, conditions. Well, in many of these rural areas, uh, the livelihood is primarily dependent upon agriculture. And with the implementation and uh, offering of electricity in those areas, it wasn't very long that the agriculture folks and the electric co-ops joined a real partnership. And as Ken uh, Meters mentioned yesterday, um, it's really uh, a partnership that delivers the health, wealth, a connection, and capacity. The provisioning of electricity in the agricultural areas across the country provided really an unprecedented uh, stimulus for increased production, it increased employment, and it increased the opportunity for uh, providing expanded value-added services to many of the commodities that were grown in those areas. In addition, the quality of life was significantly improved for those individuals living there at that time. As you can imagine today, if someone turned the main breaker off in your home, uh, what it would be like without electricity even for 24 hours, imagine that on a full-time basis. Well, whether it's the large uh, food processing uh, facilities that provide commodities to Costco or whether it's the small pocket garden that provides produce for the local farmer's market, each plays a key role um, in the food system, provides jobs, and supports the local economy. Now, certainly, while they may be on opposite ends of the economic spectrum, each of these entities is important, and each of them is an important member and key element of our cooperative. Now, over the years, uh, many of the electric cooperatives have expanded their offering of services, primarily in response to what has become a very diverse membership. Uh, our membership today is much different than it was, as you can appreciate, some 75 years ago. And so today, electric cooperatives uh, remain member-owned and controlled. They still provide electricity, but in addition, uh, they provide many other services which uh, are required or requested by their membership. And to give you a few examples of those, <coughs> excuse me, we offer member discount cards for members to purchase products and services from other entities in the community, and some of these uh, entities are nationwide. Uh, some co-ops offer broadband internet services, propane, scholarship and education programs. Usually most of them are involved in some economic development with loan uh, programs. Co-ops offer technical support, training and development, project organization leadership, uh, conservation measures. All of them support uh, the activities in their local communities and are heavily involved in developing and promoting partnerships and alliances. Now, with this, albeit very brief, background of electric co-ops, I'd like to discuss several unique and innovative efforts that are currently underway at the Benton Electric Association, which I believe exemplifies the role that electric co-ops are playing in their local communities. Now, in 1998, Benton REA worked with local farmers to create the Prosser Farmers Market Cooperative. It was set up as a 501c5 non-taxable corporation, and it was really factored and uh, fashioned after the structure of the electric co-op, which means that all the vendors have to be members of the co-op, and the, the Prosser Farmers Market Co-op is governed by a seven-member board, which is also made up uh, of the vendors. 
This uh, picture depicts a, a typical day at the Prosser Farmer's Market. Um, the area that the Farmer's Market is conducted in is a uh, city park, so it's relatively limited by that space. But currently the Prosser Farmer Market has 25 vendors and provides uh, service to some 600 patrons on a given day. Now at the conclusion of the annual meeting of the Benton REA membership in 1989, the Benton REA membership <coughs> excuse me, at, uh, amended the Cooperative Articles of Incorporation to give specific direction for the cooperative to get involved in economic development. And based on the direction from the membership, the co-op uh, initiated the development of four commercial industrial parks, which today house incubator buildings, wineries, distilleries, bakeries, milk processing facilities, and most recently for those car buffs, uh, is, this, is the Shelby Supercar Production Plant, which boasts the fastest production car made in the world. This next slide is one of eight wineries which is currently located at the Prosser Vintners Village, which is a boutique wine tasting and sales development facilitated, facilitated by Benton REA in uh, Prosser. Now, Benton REA also provides gap financing for startup businesses using one of three economic development revolving loan funds that it maintains. As an example of some of the, of the businesses or projects with the co-op has provided gap financing for include the construction of a senior center, construction of an assisted living facility, a restaurant which uh, pr serves locally grown produce, uh, downtown revitalization project in the incorporated city of West Richland, and a street lighting project. Now one very successful project which involved gap financing was the training facility for predominantly developmentally disabled uh, individuals. This project was a partnership between the co-op and the Port of Sunnyside and the Benton REA applied for and received a $200,000 red leg grant to which it applied an additional 20% for a total of $240,000. This funding was loaned to the Sunny, uh, Port of Sunnyside to construct um, a 14,000 square foot building which is occupied by the Provident Horizon Group to conduct job training skills for developmentally disabled individuals. The company serves about 85 clients and uh, has about 25 full-time employees. About five years ago, the cooperative embarked on a gigantic infrastructure project which is called the Red Mountain Transportation Project. The project consists of developing an interchange on Interstate I-82 between the Tri-Cities and Benton City in eastern Washington. Um, this slide is a picture of the Washington DOT portfolio on the project. The interchange will provide farm to market access for locally grown agricultural products including access to wineries and providing the very first direct interstate access for the city of West Richland, the Red Mountain American Viticultural Area and the Red Mountain Industrial Park. Now the cooperative played a key role in developing and facilitating local support for this uh, interchange. It facilitated the development of critical partnerships that included local cities, counties, and state agencies and involved and also provided some of the initial study funding on the interchange. We were excited that this last year this interchange, the Red Mountain Interchange Project, was one of the transportation projects listed on the governor's top transportation projects for Washington State. We anticipate its construction sometime in 2015. So in conclusion, cooperatives have what I believe is a very unique and proven capability of organizing, funding, and facilitating the partnerships necessary to accomplish any task which comes, excuse me, which, which betters the lives of their membership and improves the quality of life in the communities in which they serve. I really appreciate the opportunity and thank you Diane for offering it to me to share a few areas where cooperatives are innovatively meeting the needs of their members and the needs of the local communities they serve. After all, that is the cooperative way. Thank you.